ang pinagpipitaganan nating mga bisita na pinangungunahan ng ating Vice Governor, si Vice Governor uh, Jay Kungun. At ang mga membro ng Sanggunian Palalawigan, mga alkalde ng mga bayan, yung narito at saka dito, mga vice mayors, kagawad, mga puno, mga pinuno ng mga ahensya, mga kababayan, Salamat naman at nabanggit lahat ng mga pangalan nyo, hindi ko na kayo babanggitin ulit. Kung hindi, mas mahaba yung aking uh, pagpupugay sa inyo kaysa sa aking pananalita. Magandang umaga sa inyong lahat. Ready na ba kayo? Ladies and gentlemen, Good morning. It's been nine years since I delivered my first State of the Province address and practically the same group of people are present here today. If you remember it right, on this similar occasion, I have reported to you that, you were, that we were able to lay the foundation for a better system that would propel us, our province, to our goals as a progressive Sambales. One of the first orders that I issued was the recall of several small-scale mining permits and several others alike that had been troubling us that resulted into conflicts when several permits were issued one on top of the other. In 2011, Typhoon 1 claimed the lives of six of our Kababayans and injured three others, including a police officer who was helping in the rescue works. The damage was more prevalent in the southern part of Zambales that destroyed 150 million worth of agricultural products, 12.8 million worth of infrastructure, and 37,170 families affected. Later on, this was followed by a typhoon that hit the north when the mining stockpile in the mountains of Santa Cruz cascaded down the slopes and buried the fish ponds and rice fields in San Fernando, Tubo Tubo North, Tubo Tubo South, and BI, all of Santa Cruz. I was blamed for that calamity. Fingers were pointed at me as having been liable for the mining operations conducted in Zambales. Looking back, mining operations started in 2005 when exploration operations were conducted during the time of Governor Vic Magsaysay. It peaked from 2007 to 2010 during the time of my predecessor. But I was the one blamed for that calamity. In fact, until this 2019 elections, the same issue was thrown at me during the campaign period. I tried my best to reason out. People were at least receptive. But then again, there was the reincarnation of this sad refrain. Mga kababayan, ano ba talaga ang gusto natin? Ang pakinabangan, ang likas na yaman ng ating
probinsya o pag-awayan na lang. At that instant, don't you think it should be now for the people of Sambales to decide as to what action we should take. It's a continuing, persisting, and recurring problem, so to speak. But governance tells us that debates will only prolong the agony, the issue, and forget about solutions. We might just as well take the challenge to provide solutions to our problems. Let us attack the problem head on. What are the issues? First, it's mining. What did we do? In 2010, we recalled all permits. And on my first day of work in 2019, I also issued Executive Order Number 1 recalling all quarry permits since they were overlapping. We have done our homework and coordinated with the Department of Public Works and Highways and the Department of In Environment and Natural Resources for solutions. In turn, we, have, we now have the DANR, Department Administrative Order Number 13, Series of 2019, which provides rules and regulations and parameters in the dredging and quarry operations. Second, it's CLARA. It is also sad to note that in the last CLARA 2019, all participating divisions aired their concerns about the mishandling of the event here in Sambales. There were several complaints about unprepared venue, non-existent playground sites for some sporting events, and the lack of or wanting accommodations for the athletes. What did we do? We requested from FED Region 3 that we again hold the Clara 2020 here in Sambales, which was approved, which was approved by the same office. Thus, we started to refurbish the swimming pool. Pinanggal na natin yung mga tilapia. Improve the accommodation and bathing facilities in schools. Noon, nakikiusap yung mga atleta na maki, makiligo sa mga kapitbahay. Release funds for the procurement of equipment. In fact, our athletes and participants are already training at the Sambales Sports Center. We just hope that we will also improve in our standing comes the competition. If you turn your face to my right on that side, You will notice the big building called Sambales Provincial Legislative Building. We have initiated We have initiated the construction of that edifice to house the Sangguniang Panlalawigan for them to have a better place to legislate. It's only now that we are in the final phase of the construction. There will be more of this when we realize our projected program for collection of higher revenues. And I am talking about the proper extraction and disposal of the construction materials brought about by the Mount Pinatubo eruption which then made our lives miserable way back in 1991. 
but for which seem as of now seem to be our mana from heaven alam nyo bang mana gracia all transactions and operations will be documented likewise collection of revenues will be properly managed reported and to be deposited to the national and provincial provincial coffers ladies and gentlemen this is our future in a month's time we expect operations to be ongoing let's keep our fingers crossed that the upcoming activity will provide the impetus of resources to fund our dreams for our province. This signals a substantial increase in our provincial revenue collection. Thus, we can implement full subsidy on programs relating to health and education while increasing employment, providing decent shelter improving security, peace and order, and other social services. In anticipation of migration, due to the influx of workers, especially the drivers, in the province, zoning and development should be a prime consideration. Let the municipal mayors take note. Let us put an end to the practice of unplanned construction. Rather, all development must be in accordance with the zoning ordinances to prevent the proliferation of informal settlers. We have to facilitate the availability of real estate to avert any repetition of what's happening in some parts of our province, thereby providing solutions to potential social problems, will provide us with the needed resources to develop our province in consonance with the updated provincial development and physical framework plan, including land use. Today, I would like to call your attention to the important pillars of local governance and social services, which can bring about developmental changes in the lives of our constituents. Taking the cue from the instruction I gave to the Sangunian Palalawigan, what we need is a form of governance that responds to the needs and welfare of our people. This includes social services, economic development, and, environment, and environmental management with the aim of realizing a high level of social well-being, economic prosperity, and environmentally healthy province of Sambales. On infrastructure, we build, we maintain, we rehabilitate. Thus, our leadership is set towards the following. Completion of the unfinished legislative building and the PESO building. Repair and maintenance of the sports center facilities. Conduct of inventory of perennially flooded barangays in the province so, so we can put up multi-purpose structures as evacuation centers in Leo of using school facilities. Nakita nyo naman sa Batangas, nagre-reklamo na yung DepEd kasi ginamit na evacuation center yung mga eskulahan. Sana huwag nang mangyari yun kasi hindi naman evacuation center ang eskulahan. Pagkatapos ng uh, calamity, yung mga eraser, mga chok nandun na sa mga bahay-bahay. Repair and maintenance of our provincial road networks. Facilitate the construction of drainage facilities to ease the flow 
and discharge of run of water during inclement weather. Where you sit down, there is an existing drainage going through to the west. But that has been that has not been activated. So provincial engineer, you have to do it during the dry season. Medical and public health. We set the direction of our leadership toward designing and implementing a better health program for our citizens. We aim to provide the necessary hospitalization and medical assistance that they need. And we can do this through the following. As a matter of policy, one, additional ready supply of medicines through consignment in the four hospitals in the province. Second, purchase of additional medical equipment like CT scan, MRI, and dialysis equipment. We can also request assistance from the Philippine Charity Shifting Office on some of these hospital requirements as necessary. Revival of the senior citizens' ward in our provincial hospital. So, bagay, mabuti siguro walang senior citizens' ward kasi walang nagkakasakit. Well, expand the bed capacity of our hospitals such as the Candelaria District Hospital, the Santa Cruz, and the two other hospitals. Five, while we take good care of our patients, let us not also forget that our personnel providing services also deserve better comfort and motivation. In the local level, it generates jobs for our citizens. We also have to consider community-based sustainable tourism that provides the basic necessities of tourists and other ancillary services, such as food establishment and clean toilets along national roads. Yan ang palaging nirereklamo ng mga turista dito sa atin. Pag nagbiyahe na sila, wala na silang mahanap na makainan. Mabuti na dadagdagan na rin. Dati, dati, ano lang eh. After uh, Olongga po, nandyan yung Subic, then Iba, tapos Santa Cruz na. Mabuti ngayon, meron na rin. And in addition, clean. And not foul smelling comfort rooms. Tayo siguro ang kumagamit pag tumalim, tumilamsik yung nilalabas natin, huwag tayong magatubili na hugasan naman. Kasi pag natuyo, mahirap maalis ang amoy. In addition, we will encourage our stakeholders and players in the province for coordinated tourism activities and bundling of tourist destinations to entice tourists to visit our province. Let us take the cue from what they have done in Chiang Mai, Thailand, where you have to fly to one side and then on a daily basis visit site. It is only in prolonged stay of the tourists that the economy will grow and will benefit. On the sports development, during my six-year term, we have provided our athletes with facilities and trainings that would keep them competitive. And in those periods, our athletes have emerged as champions in various sports competitions, including abroad. Likewise, our province has always been a venue for Central Luzon Regional Athletic Association or CLARA and State Colleges and Universities Athletic Association. We will continue to extend our support for sports development and training of our athletes in the provincial, regional, and national level. 
and we intend of hosting the Palarong Pambansa in the near future. <clears throat> Education is human resource development. It is a powerful tool that liberates us from the bondage of ignorance and poverty. And in this rapidly changing world that we live in, education is the key to our survival. Thus, we need to invest in the education of our youth and continue to do what we have done before. We will provide educational assistance to honor students in the basic education and educational assistance to deserving college students who will eventually support the education of their siblings. And we have, when we have the money, we will provide for each and every student. In our desire to equip our people with information and communications, technology, skills, and make Sambales a showcase for ICT initiatives of the Department of Information and Communication Technology, I will be asking for the authority from our Sangguniang Panlalawigan, allowing my office to enter into a memorandum of agreement with the DICT in the provision of free Wi-Fi access points in different areas in the province. Mangungumpisa lang ako sa inyo na pirmahan ko na. So whether you like it or else, you have to pass the resolution. Okay ba? In a way, Sambales is the first province to benefit from that. Kaya pasalaman natin, pasalamatan natin si Senator Gringo Honasan. It is hoped that the signing of this memorandum of agreement, the framework of continuing support and mutual cooperation between our province and the DICT will be maintained. Part of this collaboration are various programs related to free Wi-Fi, digital Philippines, digital classroom, digital workplace, digital governance, ICT training programs. Coordinated na tayo doon. Nagpapadala na tayo. And the Digital Governance Award. With this program, with this program, we hope to empower our community through internet connectivity while strengthening security, developing local government units, and promoting lasting peace and prosperity. Ang sabi ko nga kay Secretary, maraming salamat po, Secretary, kasi hindi na ako mahihirapan na manood ng Netflix. Ang hirap pag nabibitin. While this is yet to happen, our heartfelt Gratitude goes to the DICT and to our longtime friend, Secretary Gringo Honasan II. Palakpakan po natin siya. Alam nyo kasi, meron tayong dalawang, ano eh, meron tayong dalawang uh, yung franchise dito, pero napakabagal. It's, uh, kailangan mapabilis dahil ang negosyo sa buong mundo ay nakasalalay sa ano, communications, technology. Yan, dyan tayo natatalo. Kaya umaayaw yung mga companies na mag-put up ng kanilang mga trabaho rito. On revenue generation, our leadership is set towards taking the initiative to find ways on how to increase our revenue. Our province has the most abundant 
and available natural resources. However, environmental laws restrict us to explore and exploit these resources. Thus, we have one, enhance the generation of real property taxes from potential industries like power generation and mineral processing plants. Second, exploit the potentials of the extraction of construction materials from our river systems that include dredging and quarrying, taking into consideration that these activities are environmentally compliant. I am optimistic that the extraction of construction materials is coming to reality given the issuance of the Department Administrative Order 13, Series of 2019 of the Department of Interior, Environment and Natural Resources, or DNR. Currently, we are in the process of putting everything in the right perspective, ensuring that all activities relating to extraction of materials are documented in accordance with the provisions and parameters of DEO 13 series of 2019. Hindi na tayo makikipag-usap sa mga commissioners o sa mga rep na ano. We now talk with the principals. Once finalized, the interagency committee will establish a management system that will implement the rules and regulations set forth by the governing laws of the land. We will establish a one-stop shop in the province where government agencies, the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, Department of Public Works and Highways, the Environmental Management Bureau of DNR, and the, the Mines and Geosciences Bureau of DNR involved will have their field offices to deliver both convenience and efficiency in providing services to clients as well as in collecting revenues in the form of taxes. However, I would like to inform each and everyone that resources are not infinite. When we partake of the manna from heaven, let us remember that they are, they are limited. Before, we, we surmised that it will take us about 100 years to extract those materials, but with the advent of technology, Perhaps we are talking of 35 to 50 years of operation. The bagay, education, shelter, sports development, among other things in the province. I repeat, we can realize our plan for total subsidy, total subsidy on health, education, shelter, sports development, among other things, in the province. <clears throat> Develop as required and necessary. But I am sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I cannot promise to build you a Disneyland. However, we will not abuse the activity for our own good. Let us consider the next generation as well. Chief Shuttle once said, and I quote, Treat the earth well. It was not given to you by your parents. It was loaned to you by your children. We do not inherit the earth from our ancestors. We are just borrowing it from our children. And I would like to give my thanks and appreciation
to Vice Governor Jay and members of the Sangguniang Palalawigan for the fast tracking of our provincial budget. Pasalamatan natin sila na nag-aproba ng ating budget sa taong 2020 na mabot sa halagang 1 billion 619 million 307,510 pesos. Higit na mataas ng 10% sa budget natin noong nakaraang taon. Ang 20% nito ay nakalaan sa development fund na para sa mga sumusunod. General Public Services, that's uh, debt services, 25.49%. So, aawasin natin kagad ang 72 million pambayad ng utang. Pero mas mabuti na yung umutang ka na muna, gawin mo yung dapat gawin, saka ka magbayad. Pero kung may utang, dapat bayaran. Social services, 6.58%. That's equivalent to 18 million 700,000. Economic services, 67.94% or 193,204,218 pesos and 95 centavos. Meron pa ba tayong ano? Meron pa ba tayong 5 centavos? Siguro medyo ano tayo rito ha? Pangungunahan din ng Provincial Engineering Office ang mga isang daan at tatlong pong gawaing pang-espresstaktura sa buong laliwigan. Ngayong taon, ang halaga ay abot sa 698,151,000. Isama pa natin dito yung mga programa na binababa ng mga congressmen at ng mga senador na tumutulong sa ating lalawigan. On the economic sector, sa nakalipas na anim na buwan, mula nang ko ay naluklok bilang punong lalawigan, ang Provincial Government, Nas Government Environment and Natural Resources Office ay nakakolekta ng halagang 38,374,000 953 pesos and 29 centavos. Baka pag in-audit ko kayo, hindi nyo maipakita yung 9 centavos. Mula sa mining and quarry at di po pang environmental regulatory fees. So, palakpakan natin ang Enros. To fully realize the potential of nature, we must nurture, conserve, respect, and protect it from our own abuse. Kasi kagaya naman nagmimina, bungkal sila ng bungkal, tapos iniiwanan, tapos tayo may kasalanan. Wala naman tayo magawa doon. Kaya sabi ko nga, ang sabi nila, ano ang ano ang uh, kapangyarihan ng governor? Sabi ko, wala. Pero pwede namin kayong takutin para yung mga ginagawa niyong kabulastugan matigil muna. After an extensive training that I went through in 1973, kaya makita niyo kung gano'n ako katanda. Ako siguro pinakamatanda dito. Happy rin lang, baka meron dyan mga kabarkada ko. Sila Mrs. Mayor Mita. I realized the need to remind others that each of us actually goes through a survival situation in life. I would like all of us to read, remember, and practice this principle. Take only what you need. Leave the rest for future generations. Thank you very much. Magandang hapon sa inyong lahat.